Hello, everyone, and welcome to Your Daily Detroit. It is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. I am Jer Stays, and across the table from me is producer... Cheyenne Osorini. How are you? I am great. How are you? You know, it's good to see you. Uh, It has been a crazy couple of days. It has been. I have been all over the place, including car dealerships and cross-country meets. Are are you trying to buy a car in this economy? Unfortunately, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do listeners have some deals for Cheyenne? <laughs> Daily Detroit at gmail.com. Help, please. Those insurance, ra- not the insurance rates, but the uh, interest rates. Those Man. interest rates are killing us over here. So, yeah, we're currently in the market, unfortunately. <laughs> it sucks having to uh, be looking for a car during the middle of a UAW strike. Let me just say that. Because you really need like a second vehicle. We do need a second vehicle, like, yes. Urbanist Twitter, don't yell at Cheyenne. No. She's not going to have any time for you. <laughs> I don't. I have two kids that go in opposite directions multiple days a week. Anyway. Yeah. The realities of living in Metro Detroit. Yes. Inescapable. Anyway, I just had to bring up a topic because I was editing the show a couple weeks ago and you and Devin were talking about Lululemon. Not Lululemon. <laughs> not Lululemon. Not to be confused with Bacardi Lemon. Just don't drink Bacardi Lemon. <laughs> Lem- the lemon kind? What was it? It, it is lemon. Yeah. Oh, oh, that is not recommended. No, flashbacks. I like rum, but that one's not recommended. Flashbacks to our younger years. <laughs> anyway, one of the things that came, like jumped out at me as to like you being completely oblivious to the fact that there was a men's line. I had no idea. I'm just sitting there going, what? Is historically, you and I and people who are in bigger bodies were not Lululemon's demographic. Like how explicit was this? For a long time- They only went up to a size 12 in women's. Okay. Okay. Wow. A size 12. Obviously, I am not a size 12. I have never been a size 12. Even when I was a child, I probably wasn't a size 12. So that's why I've never even looked at their website because I'm like, oh, those clothes aren't for me. Right? Because it has been implicit. They have been like, we don't make clothes for bigger bodies. And then I went and I looked and they do now go up to a size 20 in women's. Which is better, but there are still a lot of people with a lot of different types of bodies that would like to wear and who do work out. Yeah, none of their none of their messaging would ever hit me because I was looking back at some of the older stuff and maybe that was like 10 years ago or so. Yeah. And yeah, that just meant that I would know because I mean, if you look at me and Devin going down the street, it's like the number 10. (laughs) Well, not necessarily that bad, but. They do go up to a size 5X for men, though. Hmm. Okay. Because I guess it's okay for men to be in bigger bodies than it is for women to be in bigger bodies. So that's my one little gripe about Lululemon. If you love it, great. I am so happy for you. However. In Cheyenne's opinion. In my opinion, I'll be shopping at like Lane Bryant's athleisure section. You know, it's interesting over the years how much this has really changed. Like, I remember (laughs) working with people in the past who are like, we're never going to make a shirt bigger than an XL. Right. And that, in the not too re- distant past. Yeah. And as somebody who, look, no matter how much weight I lose, I will, the XL is the smallest I could ever consider being. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see some of these changes where there's more acceptance about what people actually are. Now, obviously, be healthy, do whatever you want to do. But when it comes to serving people, like, it just gives a real ick feeling. I remember I was in a meeting doing some work like a few jobs ago and- they were just animate that our brand should not be on anyone who's larger than an XL. And I was like, have you met Metro Detroit? Mm-hmm. Have you yeah. met any of us anywhere? Yeah. Like setting XL as your top, like they did back then, the people I was was like, what on earth are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. I'm glad to see that they've extended their sizing. Obviously, they have more space to grow in that area. But kudos to not only carrying a size 12. Let's talk about where we've been. You got the assignment. And let's be honest, it was pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. The new Rocco's Pizza. Robin Runyon mentioned that to me offline. So did a number of listeners that that place was popping up. And uh, you're very near it. So you raised your hand. I did. Actually, my child was like, we need to try this new pizza place. Are you already getting your child into the like what to know and where to go of Daily Detroit? This child... Uh, We also went to Two Hands up on uh, Big Beaver. It's a Korean 
corn dog place. That's where we went last week. Homeboy is very into all kinds of foods. So we are embracing his adventurous eating. And this is an eight-year-old who likes Ema, correct? Yes. He okay. loves Ema. We had been obviously watching the new pizza place getting ready to open. And I think it opened last weekend. So we wanted to give them a week to kind of get you know, their feet. Get their feet under them. And, and to be clear, it's called Rocco's, but it has nothing to do with like the sandwich shop. Like Rocco's is like one of those names. A ton of places are called Rocco's. But right. this is this is in Oak Park and according to their website, coming to Redford? It is, yes. Okay. It's in Oak Park on Nine Mile, right across from the Linear Park and the Flowers. They say they're from New Jersey, and so it's like New Jersey style pizza. And so we got the round, which was gigantic. It's your classic New York style pizza, fold over, spicy pepperoni. John Stewart approved? I would think so. Okay. I mean, we did not use forks. So. Oh, okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. We decided to get the round, but they also have a granny square. All right. So what's a granny square? So a granny square is a Sicilian style pizza. It is a square pizza. It has square pieces. But it is not Detroit-style pizza. Oh, man. I'm remembering this Twitter fight that our friend of the show, Karen <laughs> Dibus, got in about, like, this podcast decided to go after the person who wrote the book on Detroit-style pizza. Saying Domino's. Domino? What? It was Detroit-style pizza. No. Like, what? No. No. It wasn't like, even founded Detroit, in Detroit. Detroit Lesson 101. <sighs> Regular Domino's Little Caesars is not Detroit-style pizza. No. They have the most advertising budget, so yes. you associate them with Detroit because their name's on the Detroit Red Wings Arena for Little Caesars. The guy also owns uh, the Tigers. Domino's, the guy used to own the Tigers. Yep. So there's a lot of name around that, but that is not, I repeat, not, and under any conditions, I don't care what bro wants to be self-important to be like, oh, I'm right no matter what. No. Karen's correct. Detroit style pizza is not bad stuff. No, nope. I'm not saying don't eat it. I'm saying that's just not Detroit style pizza. Exactly. I was taken aback when I saw that thread and I almost posted a link to her book to be like, Hello? it's like, it's like those times where you see scientists like argue with the other scientists and turns out the woman scientist is like the person he's citing is the source, but yep. yeah, yeah, it really exactly. gave those kind of vibes. It was it was giving ick is mm -hmm. what it was giving. So I digress. We enjoyed the pizza. The salad was okay. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best salad. It wasn't the worst salad. So granny style again, though. Explain so a little bit more. So granny style. Okay, back to granny style. It is typically made on like a jelly roll pan, right? So it's like a flat rectangular pan. It is a doughier crust, but it doesn't have those like crispy edges like Detroit style pizza does. Nice. Nice. And they have other items too. They have wings, they have sandwiches, they have pasta. Value for money. Because that's the big thing. So, and I'm really working on this because we're working on our little series of like drive worthy destinations yeah. to highlight places that are really worth going. But uh, mon value for money, because I think that's so crucial. So, they have a extra large round. They have an extra large square, which is the grandma. And then they have something they call the big granny, which is the extra, extra large square. Who could not buy at Lululemon. L Lululemon. <laughs> no. She's picking up her moo-moos at Walmart. Okay. So those are the only sizes. So you're not getting a small round or anything like that. Those are it. An extra large round for the barbecue chicken pizza is like $21.95. That's pretty good. Yeah. Actually, like nowadays. Like another thing I've noticed, I've tried a few different places. I'm not throwing anywhere under the bus, but I feel like with inflation, everything, you're not seeing the same ingredients. And I'm not saying that's the case here. I'm just bringing this up as a general topic. My mm -hmm. heart has been broken like three times now. Oh, no. About places where it's like they used to be like solid or like mm -hmm. good, good to go, but like they were not, you know, not luxury. But then, you know, you see the switch from like mushrooms to canned mushrooms yeah. or the whatever. And that always breaks my heart because it's almost worse if the, than if the place, not that I don't want anyone to lose their jobs, any of that stuff, but it's like when you knew it was good mm -hmm. and then there's the change and you just have to like, you, you get a second pizza because you're like, yeah. I can't believe it's that this way. And then you have to, you have to believe it. Yeah. So Jer, mm -hmm. you got to do something that I am so freaking jealous Listen, of. don't rain on my parade. Okay. Listen, everybody knows that I am a giant musical fan and I love 
funny girl. And you got to go. <laughs> and I am so upset. <laughs> because I'm the greatest star. <laughs> We're not as great as Betches, but no, that's no. okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a Later. moment. But yeah, Funny Girl's in town. Yes. And really lucky to get press tickets for Funny Girl. Big shot. Mm-hmm. You know, I enjoy theater in general. I always have. Like anyone who knows me knows that like this isn't a uh, stretch for me in any way. I'm somebody, remember when I like knew the lyrics to Avenue Q by heart? Yep. Do you remember how I stole your Evita's soundtrack? Yes, you did. A uh, double disc CD. <laughs> That's the kind of family we are. <laughs> but I love big shows, big yeah. productions. And look, this isn't up and down emotionally kind of musical. Like this is not your like cheery production, but it is in a way perseverant, mm-hmm. but big. Yeah. There is something about Funny Girl and the life of Fanny Bryce that just has always had a chokehold on me. Like I've always loved that musical. And if you've never seen the movie version of Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand or the sequel Funny Lady, which is actually, I prefer more. Really? You prefer the sequel? I prefer Funny Lady over Funny Girl only in the musical numbers because... That's when she got together with Billy Rose, who was a music writer. Mm. Anyway, I digress. It's hard. And here's the other thing. I don't ever want to compare anybody to Barbara Streisand because that'll always be unfair. You could never do that. It's like comparing Bernadette Peters to Meryl Streep. And every one of our listeners over 50 years old, they know what we're talking about. (laughs) They're like, who's Bernadette Peters? (laughs) (laughs) And if you don't know, go Google. Oh, go watch Annie. Mm, Yes. Mm. Annie was in town last year, I think. Annie was in town last year. Or you could also watch the stage version of Into the Woods because Bernadette Peters played the witch anyway i could talk broadway all night long jer and we will because you know that's a great thing broadway in detroit and i can say this truthfully like the fisher theater is an amazing experience it is so wonderful theater in detroit is a really special thing and i really think that more people should take advantage of it there's so much culture in this town mm-hmm. and like we get knocked for like oh we're, we're automotive blah, blah. no no there's some great shows in this town and there's some great stuff to go to and a whole night that you can make out of this stuff and mm-hmm. shopping all the other stuff yeah there are some shows down the line that i'm really looking forward to Wicked is coming. That's in January, right? I think it is, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Company is coming. Anyway, I'm happy that you got to see Funny Girl. I can see the eyes of jealousy across the table. Uh, the envy is real. <laughs> I've got green eyes right now, let me tell you. Another thing to check out in the area, there's going to be a new IMAX theater opening up. I heard about that, and I'm pretty excited. MJR, it's the one with the three claps, right? Like the... I think it's like yeah. twice during the intro or something. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. had I, I had an ex that was obsessed with MGR and like theaters in general. And so like I had to learn how to do the claps oh, in the right gosh. places and all the things. It's It was a whole ordeal. And I'm just not that coordinated. I have never clapped in an MJR. Let me just say that. Wow. I am not for the clapping. But hey, if that brings you joy, congrats. We got to take it where we can get it. But IMAX. Yes, IMAX. Which there aren't that many around town. I think that it's going to be something that draws a lot of people in. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about Southgate, and uh, I don't know that's always on our map as far as place we talk about, but it's right down the road from Wyandotte, where we got a bunch of listeners. I've got some friends down there. Uh, It's kind of kind of interesting to see that growth of like that West Side and that Down River area, where you know I would have thought that would have been in some other areas, but to see that at that uh, Southgate, you know what? People will drive everywhere for the right movie. Because where on earth did you and your husband go for Barbie? Westland. We and drove you're to, in. We're in Oak Park. That's a hall. It is a hall, but we went because they have fancy seating there. Fancy. Okay, the drive is worth fancy seating. Okay, if, talk about it. They have like private seating areas where it's like a row where there's like individual little love seats, but it's not like at Imagine where they have the love seats, but you're like out up in the open. They have like little like cubicle walls almost built around you. And then they have like hooks for your purse and your like coats and they have little tables on the side. So you have a place to put all your like snacks. Like a personal living room? Kind of. And the seats recline and they're heated or cooled. What? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
so we went there to see Barbie because I wanted the This optimal. feels like a living room experience. It's interesting to see how much this has morphed from being a theater experience and yes. the theater imitating the living room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was only, I want to say it was only like $2 more a ticket. So worth the drive and the two bucks. Yeah. I would gladly pay that because the Troy MGR does not have those seats and they don't have the reclining seats. We should rate all of the the movie theaters around town because the brand is not consistent at all the different places. It is not. And we st- stopped going to AMC theaters. Really? Yeah. Just not, not your jam? The whole pandemic thing kind of took it out of us. Okay. So we're an MJR family now. I would love to know what theaters people like the best. Daily Detroit at gmail.com. There's quite a few of them still, so it would take a long time for us to go through them. But if you've got some ones that uh, you would personally recommend, yeah. let us know. Before we let people go, a uh, opening to talk about out in Rochester Hills. I'm mentioning it because A, listeners, but B, Breadless. And I'm familiar with it because it really got its start with first location over on the Dennis Archer Senior Greenway, right next to where, you know, Devin, uh, for the first time, went over to the Red Hook over there. Yep. Really pretty strip right yeah. there. Really cool stuff. But Breadless, October 5th. And uh, Breadless is a brand that gets people talking because it makes people feel a certain way. Either you love Breadless or you don't. Right. I have never been, mainly because I like bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, so so the bread is important to you? Not necessarily all the time, right? Like I do like sandwich, like let, lettuce sandwiches. <laughs> That's called a wrap, Cheyenne. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I enjoy breadless. I've gone a f- more than, like I've gone a few times. Yeah. You know, the the right lettuce is important. It is. The mix or whatever. There are certain lettuces that work a lot better for this kind of sandwich concept than others. I will say, and we, we talked about this on our internal Slack a little bit, I get the, I'm paying a lot for a very few calories. Like this is, mm-hmm. this is something that's for the more healthy conscious, although it definitely, I thought it tasted really good. It also, it's not just like a wrap, but there's a, like a paper sandwich like holder underneath it to try to keep all the, the stuff together, which I think yeah. is a, a really smart idea. You are going to pay a little bit more, but I think, you know, this concept's going to do well in places like Rochester Hills. I think it's going it to do, do well. Really well there. Yeah. Because you've got vegetarian options, vegan options, mm-hmm. you know, as well as, of course, you know, like a regular sandwich kind of thing. I really enjoyed every time I've went. You just have to, in your mind, get your head around the no bread and uh, make sure that it's like together, right? Like, I don't know which ones. I can't tell you off the bat which lettuces were better, but one I had quickly became a salad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. But it's true. And then, yeah. but, but like the three others were totally on point. So maybe that was just like a early prototype or whatever, because they've been really working out the kinks with all that stuff with that place. Because ever since they opened and we covered their grand opening, we had the yeah. owners on the show. They have made it very clear they're wanting to build a national franchise based out of Detroit. I think it's really great. I am excited for their growth. And the interiors are beautiful, like yeah. green on green and everything and the neon lights. And I'm not opposed to going. I'm just never in that vicinity to go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because you're not usually over on the east side very much. You you and Devin both have uh, east side issues. I don't have issues with the east side. I'm in the east side all the time. But you're farther east. You know where that place would have done would do really well? It would do well in the points. It would do very good in the points. Like you can go there from the points, the one yeah. they're at now. Yeah. But going a little bit farther out into the points, because there's a bunch of food opening up over there, they would do well out they there. They would do very well out there. I'm sure it's in their vision. Yeah, these are people that are put together. Yeah. Right, like any jokes about salads aside. Yeah. This is a company to watch in Metro Detroit. It's going to be interesting to see their growth. And I'm I'm glad to see more healthy options get the thing, you know, mm-hmm. get, get attention from here. Yeah, I'm excited. All right, and we are done for today with your Daily Detroit. Cheyenne Osorini, always so good to see you. It's great to see you too, Jer. Norris Howard will be in your chair tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be uh, good to talk to him. As always, if you've got story ideas, dailydetroit at gmail.com. If you want to leave a voicemail, 313-789-3211. That's 313-789-3211. With that, I am Jer Stays. I'm Cheyenne Osorini. Remember that you are somebody and 